Hi, I'm Lilin and I'm a filmmaker and I run a company with my husband Charles called Bobbing Boy Films and we produce short films, commercials and um, impending feature film projects. I started off actually um, doing visual arts, so I was actually doing painting and photography and I wasn't actually very interested in film and I tried a film class when I was in my third year in university and I really liked it and it felt like it encompassed a lot of things I was interested in like writing, um, trying to tell a story through an image. Though I graduated with a visual arts degree, I was going to come back to Singapore and learn more about filmmaking. So I started off just as an assistant, a director, a production manager, whatever projects I could get. I feel really fortunate to have been able to keep creatively active, you know, for the past 15 years. It's tough, but it's... Um, I'm very fortunate because my family is supportive. I don't have any children yet, so I don't have any real dependence. <laughs> it's a financially unstable industry to be in, but at the same time, you know, you do have projects that, that do pay well. Generally, it's, it's very cyclical and um, it, it can be very erratic. It's not like a, you know, a, a stable white collar job that you can take that will give you a certain amount of money every month and a, your CPF and, and you know, what have you not. I really can't imagine doing anything else and I also like the fact that it's very nomadic. You know, when you work on projects, different projects, you meet different people and get to work with different people. But as I've gotten older, I guess I've evolved as a filmmaker. So now I'm trying to find a team of people that I can grow with for the next decade. And one of those key people is actually my husband. We never actually thought of working together. So that's been quite fun working together. Adrian Pang um, plays this character called Valentine. And he's the love interest of Tsong Ting's character, Clara. And he works at Tang's in the bed linen department. Kim Meng's character comes to visit him and they want to have like this romantic moment. The auntie is like, hey, you're supposed to serve me, you know? And then Adrian made up this really hilarious line after the Kim Meng character walked away. Okay, auntie, uh, comforter, comforter. Uh, we need a comforter that's very comfortable. You're asleep before, you're not going to wake up. It's okay, you're talking about what you're talking about. Hey, everyone, you're not going to buy it. Hey, auntie. What I love to see is when actors have that moment where they improvise. So they take something I've written and they improvise and make it even funnier or even richer and better than how it was you know, at a spur of a moment when they feel it, you know, or sometimes I'll have an idea and I'll go up and tell them. I find that very exciting. I really look out for these moments. Yeah, a lot of times, these moments make it into the film um, and they are more priceless than anything I could have written. I'm interested in characters um, who want to escape. I think that's been a recurring theme in all my films. They are somehow wanting to escape from themselves, from the reality that they're in, and wanting to be more than what they think life has dealt them. Sometimes they do it within the confines of their mind. Sometimes they actually try to take that step and be something more than they are. I think that's been the recurring theme, this idea of escapism and wanting to be almost like their alter ego. You know, characters that feel a little bit trapped. I am interested to revisit some themes that I think can be explored more. So it may not be an actual sequel to like having the same characters or a continuation of the story, but thematically it may be dealing with something very similar in one film and I just want to explore it again maybe in a different way in another film. Miss. The main thing for me is clarity in story and visually um, whether the director, the filmmaker, was able to piece it together in a way that was coherent. I'm not looking so much for production value or gloss factor. I always look for whether the story speaks to me and whether there's an interesting character. And at the end of it, 
what's my takeaway? It's hard to tell a story uh, at any length coherently. Uh, I think it's a real challenge and when people can do that, um, really, I, I take my hats off to them. There were a few pieces that really stood out for me. They had a real coherence, a real resonance. Um, and, you know, I always look for a film that still stays in my mind. Because, I mean, yeah, there's some films that seem, seem to have all the elements, but after I move away from my laptop after I've seen it, I wouldn't remember it, but there were some films that linger. So those are the films that I kind of think about more. So even if they might have slight imperfections, there's something about it that strikes me. Trust your own voice because when you make films, uh, you know, a lot of times people in your crew, even your parents or your friends can continually try to sway you or try to tell you how to tell their story. But you just have to have a few people that you trust to really listen to, some gurus. Um, but you can't please everyone. Like Ultimately, you have to please yourself first and foremost. Uh, the second piece of advice, um, the second piece of advice I would give is to find a group of people, find your own tribe, uh, find a group of people that you really trust that uh, will have your back. And when you're making your film, encourage your vision and um, support you uh, in every way that they can.